President Barack Obama shed tears today as he announced executive actions intended to curb down gun violence in this country. And this is a very important first step. Let's take a look at the core of his message. We understand there are some constraints on our freedom in order to protect innocent people. Innocent victims, he's referring to those children like the first graders, victims of the mass shooting in Sandy Hook, and the restrictions, Nick. These are, these are five points that the government is trying to impose for the benefit of the, of the population. We're talking about seller license and background checks, overturning exemptions that existed for online sellers and some gun shows around the country. Also, the states must disclose those who are disqualified of owning guns being mental health or domestic abuse. Also, the FBI will double up the workforce that is approving these background checks. Congress will invest $500 million into mental health programs. And also, we're going to start doing research on smart gun technology, trying to prevent any unnecessary deaths. Do you think this is an important first step, or is just a token for those victims and those affected by gun violence in this country? Well. Obama said it flat out. This isn't, you know, to make, you know, the, the last mass shooting easier to swallow. This is to prevent the next one, is what he said. And, you know, he went on to say, you know, this isn't only about Sandy Hook and other mass shootings that we've seen at movie theaters, for example. This is about the kind of gun violence that happens every single day in cities, cities like Chicago, for example, where he's from. So, you know, I personally, I'm looking at this from a little bit of a pessimistic point of view. I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, fight against this. A lot of people in this country, not only, you know, a lot of people who are pro-gun, uh, but a lot of people who are in Congress who are going to try to push, push against this and fight this um, with a lot of court cases as well. So we also have to look into next year. Let's say a Republican wins. Of course, you know, this was an executive order. The new president will have every power to just take that back away. And he held words for Congress. Exactly. He said that there's an element of maybe the Congress hijacking the country. And he said something very important. He said, Congress is not acting because they want to win elections. And I think this is a very critical point. He is pushing for universal background checks. He's pushing for an overhaul of the gun laws and also being respectful of the Second Amendment. And I've been reading lately, and one of the most important uh, or more critical approaches I've heard is that the Second Amendment was written when we were using muskets, not semi-automatic rifles. And I think that we have to be sensitive to the fact that the guns and the gun ownership has evolved. But the National Rifle Association, it's a big roadblock for them. It's all about the bottom line. It's all about how much money they can make. They are not about protecting the lives of the innocent. They are pushing for more Americans, those who maybe are not qualified and has no, have no business owning weapons doing so. And I think that's something that President gets really upset. We saw how he got emotional. This is not the first time after every mass shooting that has happened in this year, he has come forward and say, with very strong uh, sentiment, the crying, why are we not taking action in Congress? Yeah, well, you know, th that whole argument, taking it back to what you said about the Second Amendment. Now, I don't buy that one bit. You know, you, look, you look at the First uh, Amendment, right, which talks about freedom of speech. No one's trying to take away our freedom of speech when they put a law in place that says you can't yell bomb on an airplane or you can't yell fire in a movie theater. Those, uh, just because you have freedom of speech doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. And those laws aren't taking away those freedoms. Those laws are looking out for the public safety and the good for everyone, right? So we have to understand that this isn't undermining the Second Amendment in any way in putting these things in place. The same way, you know, if you look at the Fourth Amendment talking about privacy, for example, we have metal detectors uh, that scan your whole naked body before you get onto an airplane. No one's against that because it's for public safety. No one's trying to take away our, uh, our, our amendments or our freedoms. It's simply a way to make sure that we're safe and these are things that need to be implemented. For a lot of people, you know, saying if you um, have mental illness or, or, you know, you've been, you know, abusing somebody in your home or something, you shouldn't be able to buy guns. That's a no-brainer for a lot of people, but unfortunately a lot don't see it that way. The lobbying of the National Rifle Association and the gun industry is so strong that has been able to push off the overhaul of the laws regardless of how many instances of gun violence, call it mass shooting, call it crime on the street, call it even the police using guns because of the culture of guns that there is in this country, the, because they are already with a preconception that they might find someone with a gun. So I think that President Obama is taking a big step, the first step in the road of better and stronger gun control laws in this country.